We live in a world of more than one million islands, encompassing diverse ecological environments and indigenous cultures. Yet islands are often epicenters for plant and animal extinction, and now many are threatened by global warming and sea level rise. But there are ways to protect endangered species and diminish the effects of rising tides and the destructive storms that come with them. The tiny, remote atoll of Nanumea is the northernmost of nine Polynesian islands in the nation of Tuvalu, one of the smallest nations in the world. Though Tuvaluans here have played no part in global warming and sea level rise, they find themselves most at risk by their effects. This has prompted a visit by Berkeley Nonprofit Ecology, and after days of navigating the Southwest Pacific, they've arrived to quite a welcome. Ecology is the world's only nonprofit organization whose sole focus is preserving island environments and cultures, and we do this in a very unusual way. We'll approach island villagers and ask them what tangible thing, such as a school, freshwater delivery system, solar en energy system, they would like in exchange for preserving their environment. Dwayne Silverstein is the executive director of Ecology, which to date has launched 200 island projects and saved over 1 million acres of island ecosystems around the world. We have this very uh, interesting project from Sea Ecology, it's a two-fold one, the protection of coastal areas and uh, the extension of the Women Handicraft Center. Currently, there are 660 people living in Nanumea. Today, as has been true for thousands of years, the people of Nanumea survive mostly through subsistence fishing and agriculture. Other than a few government positions, there are no paying jobs on the island. Now, as rising sea levels and storm surges threaten their lagoons, beautiful shores and surrounding reefs, Nanumeans must find other means to augment their income. We are here now in the island of Nanumea, in the island nation of Tuvalu in the Pacific, because Ecology just funded a Woods Handicraft Center at their request in exchange for planting a new mangrove forest to help with the buffering from the rising seas. The highest elevation of Tuvalu is a mere 16 feet above sea level. The average is six. Some areas that had never seen flooding are now frequently deluged by storm surges. A new mangrove forest is born. Yay! The new, there used to be mangrove trees here, and now we are replanting. And replanting. Kind of... Exactly. The planting of 1,000 new mangrove seedlings along the coastline, as prescribed by Ecology and Nanumea in partnership, helps to prevent these looming dangers from becoming real catastrophes. Mangrove forests have withstood tremendous tsunamis, protecting inland populations and mitigating environmental and economic damage. They thrive in sand and salt water. They dispel wave energy, limit the intake of salt, and fend off erosion. And here's the first phase of the project. You can see they've already grown to about one meter, three feet high. And we were just planting, because Ecology likes to be hands-on, uh, some new mangrove seedlings. So it's a thrill to be here and to see that this project is actually working. The mangroves work not only as a buffer, but their roots also act as breeding grounds and nurseries for fish, crabs, and other marine life. Ecology assistant is the first ever direct financial assistant to benefit a community in Tuvalu. One, two, three, go! Yeah. It's very interesting and very exciting. Traditional handicrafts made at the new center will be sold in Tuvalu's capital city of Funafuti and elsewhere. And on behalf of the women of Tuvalu and the National Council of Women, the Nanume women, we would like to thank Ecology for the, the great assistance and uh, we hope to work together in future. Pula Toofa is a coordinator of the Tuvalu National Council of Women. She's the one who orchestrated this grand opening ceremony for the Handicraft Center and presented Duane and President of Psychology, Ken Murdoch, with the first headdresses created there. We thank you so deeply for your vision to preserve this beautiful place 
for the hundreds and thousands, perhaps, of years that you have preserved this place in this wonderful and pristine way. You have learned to live with the land and to preserve it without destroying it. We applaud you, we commend you, and we recognize the great history that you have. Kotahi. Today, the people of Nanomea and the people of Seacology are one. Yeah. Nanomea and Tuvalu will undoubtedly face enormous challenges in the years ahead. Yet the people of Nanomea and Seacology have embraced the common goal of protecting this beautiful and remote island so that its environmental and cultural traditions will not only endure, but flourish for thousands of years.